Hi, everybody. Welcome to Revitalize Meet, part of the Revitalize Connecting People YouTube podcast series, where I get the chance to meet with business entrepreneurs, business professionals from across the global business network. And this week, I've got the great pleasure, sorry, privilege to be with a gentleman who's got an eye for detail and most importantly, how to really pop the image that you're looking to expose yourself online and offline with quality photography. Can you please welcome today our Revitalize Meets Guests of the Week is Mr. Nate Cleary from Nate Cleary Photography. Nate, how are you today? Thank you, Lee. I'm doing great. It's great to be here. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> superb to catch up with you as well, because we've been working with each other for the last few months anyway, maybe even the last, the last year or so. Uh, and it certainly has been a great journey. So thank you so much for joining me today uh, on the, the recording today as well, most importantly. Um, can we start first of all, because you've got a real background story, especially traveling across the pond to come over to uh, to Scotland. What's, could you let everybody who's watching and listening tell them a bit about your business journey, where you came from and where you are right now? Of course. So definitely a, a unique story there. Um, I actually kind of started my professional life as a U.S. Marine. Um, and uh, throughout that time, I discovered photography, and I started specifically with fashion photography, which is not your, your normal starting. Usually you start with families at the park and things like that and work your way up. So I basically started jumping into the deep end um, and uh, dual hatting both military uh, and photography, traveling around the world led to a lot of interesting experiences that kind of broadened my horizons, uh, a lot of similar kind of techniques in the way we do things. And so uh, there came a time where we had the opportunity to move anywhere we wanted and we chose Glasgow. And uh, yeah, it's been an incredible journey so far coming to a new country, totally different climate from Southern California where we last were. Uh, but the the opportunity to meet new people and photograph new locations has just been a, a real blessing for me. Absolutely super. Yeah, the climate is slightly different to where you've came from. Just <laughs> a little bit slightly different on that occasion. But you're right, there's some great architecture, there's some great images all around sort of Glasgow, especially and, and further afield across Scotland. Um, with traveling overseas and coming from across the pond, like I mentioned, right? What's been your biggest challenge uh, with your business uh, and really getting established over the last, the last few years? I think the biggest challenge is, is just connecting with the type of clientele that, that I um, am used to working with. So, you know, you move to a new country and, and you literally uh, you don't know anybody. And back in California, working in LA, uh, working in the industries there, I was able to kind of naturally and organically, um, you know, pick up these clientele, the, the pipelines, as, as you would call them, um, and, and establish myself, my presence, you know, in the, in the LA commercial and fashion industry. But coming here, th there's nothing. Um, and so that was probably the biggest challenge was how do I get people to know that I exist? <laughs> really good. And, uh, I, I would say in terms of, of uh, solving that problem, um, uh, groups, uh, uh, direct networking, uh, which revitalized has been just a huge part of that. Um, being able to connect with the people who really care about their businesses, uh, the, the people who care a lot about their business are the ones that are going to hire me. Uh, and look for my type of work. So um, this has been, uh, that's been my biggest challenge, but joining Revitalize uh, has definitely, um, I mean, jump-started uh, how fast uh, I would be picking things up here. Brilliant. It's, it's great to hear that, Nate. And it's it's down to the, the activity and engagement that you've been giving within the group itself and how that's opened up doors or opportunity for you as well. And one of the biggest things I want to ask yourself from a challenge is what's been your biggest achievement in the last 12 months? What's been your one that's stood you out from the crowd? My biggest achievement, 
I, I would really say being able with less than a year of being here in the pandemic environment, reaching a point where uh, I'm, I'm essentially, I'm working full time in the sense that I was working in LA. Um, that, that was not something I expected in the first year. I expected it to take a couple of years at least to, to kind of slowly get there. Um, so I, I would say that that's my biggest achievement is the, the just fantastic reception I've had here from, from individuals and uh, uh, companies in Scotland. Absolutely super. I, yeah, it's about the connections, about the people that you're meeting, and it's about those those relationships that you're galvanizing there. Most importantly, you've, you've built upon that, the pipeline that you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, we talk a lot about adapting business, and especially where you're in photography, it's a very in face-to-face -face environment. How have you adapted your business? That's been one of the biggest challenges, adapting your business for a hybrid world of online and offline. How have you done that? How have you succeeded in doing that so far? It's definitely interesting uh, adding the, the online portion. Uh, and, and it kind of brings me back to the, to the start of the, the pandemic. So I was a guest uh, to a wedding and it was a Zoom wedding. Now they hadn't hired me as a photographer uh, and I, I would never have done this in a professional sense, but I thought to myself, you know what? I'm pretty handy with Photoshop. You know, I, I know how to do things. Let me take some screenshots and let me see what I can do. And I realized it is not, uh, not ideal. <laughs> uh, so that right away, this was at the very beginning of the pandemic that, that let me know there are gonna be some challenges. And reflecting back, in the more traditional sense, you might go to networking events, um, you know, business meetings, things like that. And as a photographer, I might bring a, you know, a lookbook of some sorts. Uh, I'm gonna have my business cards um, and just have a very physical uh, visual presence and, and you don't have that. So trying to adapt that here, uh, one of the things I like to do is take advantage of the Zoom background. Yeah. Um, by changing that up uh, weekly or changing that up to be more uh, engaging with a, a potential clientele that I'm meeting with um, to be able to immediately show a little bit of my work and what I can do for them. Aside from that, though, that there's actually been some advantages because there's in a way much greater reach that you get from the online methods. Mm. Uh, I can talk with someone in Aberdeen, I can talk with someone in London, and I can set something up. Uh, you know, and that might, might be we're meeting somewhere for, for a shoot, or they're sending clothing to me for, you know, mannequin shots. Um, but it's the kind of reach and engagement that I actually wouldn't have normally had, being able to just, just find someone, you know, hundreds of miles away. So there's, there's been some, there's been some kind of good things that have come with it too. Yeah. It's interesting the way that you have adapted that. And it's, it's, it's great when you think about using the zoom culture and using the online backgrounds, especially that, that really brings to life what you do, because a lot of the images you use behind you are a lot of the, the work that you've done over the, the last couple of years from fashion to product, to commercial, to food, to hospitality. Um, and, and I can see what you mean by the way you change your background, your Zoom background quite regularly now. Um, one question I like to ask everybody who comes along to the interviews is sharing a bit of knowledge, a golden top three tips of advice. And for you specifically, we're looking at how, what would you say to somebody out there who wants to expose their brand, either themselves or their company, online or offline, what would be your top three tips about getting really bang on the money exposure for their brand through image? Yeah, so I, I would say that the first thing is to know what your target audience is. And this is something, I mean, if you have a business, you have a target audience, you have someone that you're trying to reach um, and being able to kind of express who that is, you know, are they young, are they old, is it, eco-friendly? Is it corporate? Is it hip? Is it more on the retired line of things? Uh, athletes. Uh, so that's the key to getting your photos to reach them is to know who, who you want to reach. And then with that, you want your images to tell a story. Uh, no professional photographer will just show up and snap, snap, snap. There's always a story building process 
uh, especially when we talk about editorial style of photography uh, as telling that story. So whether you have a photographer or you know, you're just doing some quick stuff with your phone, you want there to be some sort of story. You want to think about your background. You want to think about the colors, uh, the time of day. Uh, is it warm? Is it cool? Um, you know, is it, are you trying to connect with, a, a, you know, a, your city? So you have, you know, a, a big Glasgow sign or, you know, the people make Glasgow, um, things like that, um, that, that are going to kind of connect with that. Kind of getting a little bit more on the uh, photography side of things, uh, you're going to want to always check the photographer's work before the price um, so that you know there's millions of photographers out there, uh, but you want the one that's going to be best for you. So screening those, those kind of bad apples out right away, that's going to give you the cream of the crop to look for. And that's going to give you a better sense of where you are with your budget and what you can do. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of speeding through these a little bit. I could talk about this stuff for hours. Uh, and then the, the last one, this is um, kind of more towards the photographer side as well. Get to know the photographers that you're thinking of working with, because we all have different personalities. Uh, we all have different styles of work. Don't just talk with us over email, you know, to have a Zoom. Uh, have a phone call at, at the, the very minimum. Because um, if, if you're not comfortable with us, it doesn't matter how great we are, you're not going to have a, a good shoot. Um, I like to kind of compare myself to, uh, you know, uh, family photographers. Um, you know, the, the, there's some photographers out there, you know, their mom, you know, their dad, they're, you know, very, very family centric, family oriented. Uh, and they're going to get along really great with, with that type of, of clientele, with that type of market. And then you have me coming in with my little blue <laughs> mohawk and my, all my sass. Um, and sometimes that could be, you know, a little, a little off-putting, you know, or maybe you don't want your kid thinking like, oh, I could have blue hair. Um, <laughs> so I'm not always going to be the best fit. Um, someone else isn't always going to be the best fit personality wise. So those would be my biggest tips. Uh, with the in general kind of how 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 do you use your imagery and then more on the photographer specific side when you're looking for a photographer kind of key things to look at there's some really good pointers there really Nate and especially I mean one of the, the biggest ones is actually identifying the photographer that works for you because as you do and I've seen it in first-hand experience is that you really delve into the knowledge about the subject about the atmosphere about the environment that you're working in and you instruct the, the person, uh, the company, to be in the best light, the best place to really explain why you're taking that shot in that certain light as well, which I think is extremely important. A lot of people just think it's click and shoot, but there's a lot more that goes behind it to make sure that you really bring the image full to life. And one of the great points there as well is, is identifying the story, you know, telling the story well. You know, it's great having images, but they've got to be able to deliver the message and deliver the story as well. So thank you so much for sharing some real golden nuggets of knowledge there from your treasure trove of uh, experience, I should say, most importantly, Nate. Um, we talk a lot about self-reflection and we talk about you know, what we do in business to really self-reflect, to decompress from a busy week. Uh, it's either from training, personal development, reading, how do you self-reflect? How do you take time out of your busy schedule of, you know, you do a lot of miles on your feet and getting around places. So what's the best way you, you self-reflect, Nate? So for, for me, I, I spend so much time uh, either staring through a viewfinder or, you know, a screen of some sort that the best thing for me is to get away from any kind of screen. <laughs> <laughs> so um, particularly it'll be, um, either going somewhere with our dog. We've got a, um, a 65 kilogram uh, Irish wolfhound wow. uh, Malamute mix, which looks like a werewolf. That's a big uh, dog. And we'll just, yeah, we'll <laughs> just go, we'll just walk, you know, walk to the park. Um, and then with my wife, um, being, you know, somewhat new to, to the country, we found a really great way to kind of decompress is to, to just go somewhere, just, you know, Go to go to George Square. Go to you know, uh, city center somewhere. Find a new bar. You know, find a speakeasy. You know, uh, 
In California, we would be doing wine tasting. Here, it would be more of a whiskey tasting. <laughs> good point. Very good point. Some good place in Glasgow to get some good whiskey yeah. tasting, I'll tell you. Yeah, just experience a little bit of culture, um, you know, and enrich ourselves a little bit in the kind of wonderful uh, uh, place that we live in and just uh, kind of turn off that technical bit and just enjoy you know, it's a big thing I speak to a lot of people about over the last few weeks, especially in these interviews, is that it's that switch off time. You know, the biggest challenge everybody has is not enough time. And then sometimes I've got too much time and I've got the time to switch off. But I think it's extremely important that everybody takes time to do that. You know, they take time through their week, especially in their busy schedules. Um, thank you for sharing that, Nate. Really appreciate it. Um, for everybody who's watching and for listening today, um, how can they make contact with Nate? What's the best way of organize either a virtual cup of coffee or maybe meet you up for a drink and have a good conversation? What's the best way of connecting with you? I'm always happy for meeting up over a, uh, a cup of coffee or a pint uh, of something else. <laughs> uh, but I can be reached, uh, of course, through my website, uh, nateclary.com. Uh, I'm also, uh, my business page is on Facebook, on Instagram, and on LinkedIn as well. Always happy to chat through those. And you can reach me through text, WhatsApp, um, and um, uh, Messenger Pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> they still do that? They still got mes pig messengers with pigeons, I, I think? I would really like some sort of Messenger Crow. I don't know if that's <laughs> a thing, but I think that would be cool. <laughs> we can look into that, Nate. I think that'd be a good good solution for you, I think, to get that. So it makes you stand out from the crowd, I think, that one. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Nate, thank you so much. And I'd highly recommend everybody who's been watching and listening to uh, this episode this week is to reach out to Nate, tap into his experience, uh, look into what he's been doing with many, many companies and individuals uh, across Scotland and beyond, online and offline. And most importantly, as I mentioned at the beginning of today's interview, is about how he really brings the image to life, literally makes the colour pop through the screen, through the image, tell the story identifying the right audience that you're looking for as well. Nate can actually help you to do that. Nate, thank you so much for joining me today on Revitalize Meets. I really appreciate it. And, of course, uh, Lee. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you're more than welcome, my friend. You're more than welcome. And thank you to you all for watching and for listening today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as every week there'll be a new video or a new playlist being added to the YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching. Thank you for listening. And for me and Nate, make sure you take care of yourselves, stay healthy. And as always, remember, everybody, keep connecting. Take care. We'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye for now.